Hello and welcome to episode 132 of Vokta Gaming. I'm your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we're here with SC Forum Tuesdays on a Wednesday. Before I get into that, let me introduce to you our two players. First up is our villain for today, opposing our gorgeous, gorgeous SC Forum hero. His name is KK. And opposing him, of course, is our SC Forum hero for the week. Player I have featured before, the man with the single greatest stream in the history of esports. His name is Adze. So, SC Forum Tuesdays on a Wednesday. Why? Let me tell you. On Sunday, I went to a barcraft to watch IPL4. Um, I had to leave before the finals because, holy shit, IPL, uh, you are so delayed. It was unreal. <clears throat> I left at 5 o'clock in the morning. I got home at 7. I went straight to bed. I got up for work at 10, uh, went in at 11, and immediately began to be violently ill. Uh, I was sent home by 12 o'clock, and I spent all of Monday and most of Tuesday in bed before work again. So that's why there was no video yesterday. That's why we are only hitting SC Forum Tuesdays today. <clears throat> so I do apologise for those of you who missed uh, yesterday's video. But we are getting it today. We are getting Adzi versus KK. Now, there is a few things I want to talk about. First up, again, big, big thanks to all the guys at Barcraft. Uh, the Kyoto Lounge themselves. All the staff there who are always absolutely fantastic people to work with. As well as that, big shout out to John Harrington, I think I've got your last name right. The guy who organises all this, who makes it all happen and who is always absolutely thoroughly pleasant uh, and a wonderful person to be around. I, uh, I have a lot of great respect for John. As well as that, big props to John's friends and housemates who are setting up a LAN in Manchester. More details on that as it happens. It is called the Manchester LAN Tasia. And none other than yours truly will be providing live commentary. Oh, we are excited. But anyway, all that aside, let's get on with SC4 on Tuesdays. So as we've seen, KK here is doing the Forge Fast Expand. You drop the Forge first, you get the Nexus, Gateway, Cannon, blah, blah, blah. It's all very really nice, it's all very really safe. As it is though, this Cannon was quite delayed and that has allowed Adji to get in with these four links because he did go pull first. <clears throat> so he forces the cancel on the cannon and the problem with this is you don't have any units to defend that cannon is so important so now KK is pulling probes and losing workers going to lose all these workers and once again Adzi can just go to work here finally starts to drop another cannon but he's going to continue to lose workers here and of course if he just loses these pylons uh, he's going to be in a great deal of trouble because he's not making any more pylons these cannons will not finish before that cannon dies. Okay, he finally gets to work on another pylon, but still this sets him further and further behind economically. And look at that, the gateway goes down, the forge goes down, so no more cannons made until this pylon finishes. Oh, uh, if he could kill that first, he's not gonna though. So finally, this rush is over and done with, I would say. Those two links are not going to be enough. Another pylon goes down to make everything work. Oh, that was poor placement of that pylon. I understand why it's there, but it means his gateway is still unpowered. Adzi, meanwhile, is taking advantage of this by expanding more. I like that from Adzi. He had a ton of money built up because he was focusing on this attack at the front. And uh, not entirely sure what he's doing now because he doesn't have Zergling speed. So he does lose two Zergling to that, but he is going to get more worker kills. And that's always nice. The workers do retreat to the cannons. Forces absolutely zero minus gone. He's up to seven workers killed. So that is very, very nice to see. Cybercore now going down to the four stalkers to come out. He's chrono boosting out the Zealot. Uh, as he is attacking the Nexus with four Zerglings. That is going to take roughly half an hour to die. Uh, he should be killing this probe, but never mind. Sending an Overlord in to scout what he's already seen. And sending, oh, sending three Overlords to this high ground corner here. Meanwhile, in his base, he's getting up a Roach Warren. So perhaps uh, Roach Warren's, of course, really, really good uh, counter to this. Or not counter, 
but a good strategy to go into against a Forge Ross, it's one, because you can come forward, you can quite often snipe the Forge, maybe even snipe a Gateway, he's used his Cyber Core as part of the Wall of, that's actually really bad, uh, I understand why he's done that, because he's under so much pressure, but that means the Roaches can now snipe the Cybernetics Core, which means no more Stalkers in response to them. Just where you generally see the cyber core being built further back where it cannot be sniped as part of the wall. As well as this, how does he get out? I'm pretty sure that's thoroughly blocked. Because he has to kill the gateway or three cannons and a forge to escape his base. Unless he decides to kill his own cyber core again. Now this is interesting from Adzi. Does he... Okay, you can see the probe. Uh, the question is why isn't he killing it? That probe is in his base. It can scout whatever it wants. KK has not seen the right one there. He has a probe in his opponent's main base and he has not scouted the Roach Warren. Uh, pretty soon he's going to see Roaches. Oh, he doesn't even see. Okay, okay, see <laughs> the Roaches now because the Roaches are going to kill the probe. Guys, guys, let me talk to you about this. Scouting is so important in StarCraft 2. It is. It is the biggest part of the game, knowing what your opponent is doing and responding to it. If you get a probe in your opponent's main base, don't leave it where he can see it. Hide it over here or actually scout the base. Just do it. Just scout. This is a thing I bug Adam about all the time. Adam being adzy. Like, he just does not scout properly enough. What I'm going to bitch about to him after this game, however, is his creep spread. This is really bad. There is no creep spread. You've got three bases up and no way of quickly moving between all three. As a Zerg, you are a reactionary race. That is what you do. You see what your opponent is doing and you react to it. That creep spread is so important to allow you to react quicker. And holy crap, back in KK's base, we see three gateways going on here. Another one up there, another one there. There's seven gateways currently building, uh, which is nice because he's got a lot of money banked up. But KK has just not been keeping up on anything whatsoever. Has not been building any stalkers. Has built two sentries so far. Uh, Adi now has a ton of roaches. Warp gate research finally finishes, but he can move forward and snipe. Oh man, if he sniped this forge before plus one weapons was done. That would be nice. As it is, from the looks of it, he's waiting for a Hydra Den. Okay, trying to snipe the Cyber Core before Stalkers come out. Do not fall into that whatsoever. He could definitely do it. He's got the units here now. Okay, unfortunately for him, Stalkers are out, but that Cyber Core will die. And that's what I was talking about. Why having the Cyber Core as part of the wall is really bad. And look at this Roach Force now. Holy crap. His Hydra Den is finished, so he's going to have Hydras joining them in the next hour or so because he has no creep spread and hydras are really slow off creep but that was a nice snipe on the cyber core what that means is he's basically got these units here five stalkers that are any use against these roaches because zealots just died to this many roaches and as he's now just pushing in with these roaches not waiting the six years it will take for the hydras to get across the map uh, he is getting group spines and three emo chambers to match the upgrade. Of course, he does have a plus one finish for KK, so he should be able to take down these roaches with the help of the probes, getting more stalkers walking in. And again, look, we have roaches and hydras halfway across the map. With proper creep spread, they would have been a lot closer. As it is, KK will now get another round of warp ins that he should not get. And here we see KK warping in, mostly stalkers, in fact entirely stalkers. He's got tons of zealots because he lost his cyber core and had to make nothing but zealots. We have Fort Adji on the way, an infestation pit. We have plus one missile attacks, that's the Hydra and Roach upgrade. And we get plus one carapace for all of these units. Now we're sending some zombies in by themselves just to die. Uh, but it is bringing KK out of his base, Adzi. With a huge supply advantage, he's going to lose two roaches here to a full rally point, however. But Adzi is dropping a fourth base down. He's going to get miles ahead economically. Look at the money he's got here. Uh, 1,500, that's ridiculous. Still no creep spread. Come on, Adam. 
get it together, fella. Getting it, uh, pathogen glands, glial reconstitution. So that's the movement speed and the energy upgrade for infestors. And of course, the movement speed is for roaches. If you did not know by now, if you did not know by now, where we for the past 132 videos get on it, fellas. Everyone needs to get on everything today. Now, this is a decent push from KK. Unfortunately for him, there is no AoE with this army uh, because he has no Colossus. We are at 15 minutes in the game and he's still on gateway tech. Like I'm saying, this is a good attack, but imagine one or two Colossus behind this. That would absolutely clean up the Roaches and Hydras. As it is, these Stalkers are going to go down once the Zealots disappear, and they do. No, uh, there is a forward pylon, but the Warpins uh, were all back at home. Uh, rather pointlessly. I'd rather have waited the extra time and then just spammed those units out closer to reinforce. But anyway, we have KK at half the supply of our SC Forum hero, Adze. Adze's dropping seven more Hydras, getting Mr. Tax level two and Grand Carapace level two. So his upgrades are far, far outstripping the Protoss now, who is stopped at plus one attack. He has a ton of money still. There we go, dropping the units right forward, but right in the path of the Roach Hydra, and it means it's Alex of a Hind, so they're not taking any of the damage. The Roaches are absolutely slaughtering everything in KK's army. Adzi is barely losing a unit here. The Pylon goes down and KK just leaves because he's got no units left and he is a terrible, terrible player who should feel bad. Uh, by which I mean he's about the same level of Protoss I am. So, good things and bad things from Adzi that game. I'm just going to go over them quickly. Good things, bases. Any time his money built up and he couldn't spend it, he made another base. That's a really nice thing uh, at that level. Obviously, at the higher levels, you're going to learn more timings for when bases should go down uh, and so forth. But at this kind of level, at the bronze, silver, gold level, get used to dropping a base every time you've got money you can't spend. It's just so, so good. Uh, other good things, kept up his army production, so he always had a nice big army. Got on top of his upgrades, got the double evos down. That's always nice to see. Bad things. Creep spread. Seriously. Look at it. That is, there is no creep tumors whatsoever. And that is a big, big problem. Got enough energy for it. He's got queens. They've all got energy for creep tumor. Start spawning those creep tumors, Zergs. Get it done. Creep is super important for map awareness, for scouting, uh, for just getting units from one place to another, for reinforcing attacks, for defending bases. Creep spread is the number one priority. Bases, creep spread units. Get it done, Zergs. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Like, his scouting was fine. He was always getting links at the front. He had him contained with those roaches. So, that was nice to see from Adam. That's uh, one of his big problems is his scouting. But he did mostly keep on top of that during this game. I am happy with that. Anyway, congratulations to our SC Forum hero, who once again wins the day right here on Vokta Gaming. Don't forget you can join our forums at www.scforum.eu, in which you can send me replays. You yourself... You, gentle StarCraft 2 player, can be featured on this channel. You should be doing that. Seriously, it's awesome. Adam loves it. Uh, we've got Finns next week again because uh, Finns just love sending me replays. And you got to love that. So we've got Finns again next week. Uh, anything else, of course, don't forget to check out Temple Hub, who I am now a part of. YouTube.com forward slash Temple Hub. Of course, my videos will always be live on this channel first. Also, starting Friday or Saturday this week, my two days off, I will be doing one video a week, about 15 or so minutes long. I'm going to do a Let's Play of Planescape Torment. Kicking it old school with the RPGs. Just feel like after 132 videos, we need something to break this up. And as part of uh, the Temple Hub thing, they want people to do some RPG stuff. And I'm quite happy to oblige them. Anyway, that will do for today. I'll be back tomorrow with some pro games. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all later.